adventure at Castle Farms during the apocalypse. All right, so I had Lynn show you that tree for a reason. That tree is a ginormous mulberry tree. Now, when we first bought this place, that tree was about this big around and was covered with fruit. It's a female mulberry, so it's covered in fruit and we could pick it. And we used to pick it, we used to make jam, we used to make wine. Okay, as the tree grew and grew and grew and grew, you can now not easily reach the fruit. But the fruit still flourishes, it falls on the ground. So for years, we just let the wild birds eat it. And then the mess that was on the ground, we would literally let the chickens out so the chickens could run in there and pick up all the mulberries that fell to the ground. Okay, but we could no longer eat them. I got to eat a few every once in a while when they would fall on one of the tables or something in that yard. All right, so when was it last year, I guess, I was saying, you know, I think if we put up sheets, we could maybe catch the mulberries and use them before they got, they hit the ground and got destroyed. So this year, and I said, but you know, that's a lot of work. But if there's ever an apocalypse, I'm gonna do that. Well, there's an apocalypse. And so I can't really do it in there because the dogs are in there. Someday I'll tell you all about our dogs. But our dogs are in there, so I really can't do it. So I put out a couple of them. I put one in the pool yard and I put one here. And it gathered quite a few, but I've been getting them every day. So every day I just come out, I kind of shake it all down to the bottom there. And I pick out all the leaves and pieces of stick. Are you taking a picture of my ass again? I'm trying not to. Oh, you are not! <laughs> At any rate, so I just pick out all the cruddy stuff, the berries that didn't quite make and uh, all that shit. I just pick it out of there, throw it away. So, like I said, not a real big harvest. In fact, I'm getting ready, I'm showing you this because I'm getting ready to take it up because it stopped really getting, the first couple of times, I got about three times that many berries. But it's, it's starting to come to the end of its bearing cycle. So this is, in fact, I'm putting all this away today. Now, if Lynn will pan out, I'll tell you a little bit about this very elaborate um, thing that I built here to catch them in. It, it's called, I put this together in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, and what it is, is I just took and I took those clip things. I got, oh, I love these things, by the way. These things are wonderful. Um, I got them in a tool bin at some place and uh, I got them like a whole bucket of them and I use them for a lot of things. Clothes pins too, you'll notice there's a clothes pin at this end. I use clothes pins a lot for these little five minute fixer upper things that you can use to build shit with. But at any rate, so then I just kind of, I stuck it on the fence over there and then I just kind of stuck it in the fence there and stuck it on one of my tomato cages and then just pinned it up so that it makes like a cup and then it fills up. So. The idea is to just catch as many as I can so that I can use them. So, not a big haul. This is the end of it. So now, I'm going to give you a real quick, simple, how to make wine thing. So I don't, can you turn that off? Yes, or I can. You, Okay, turn it off and you, she's gonna turn it off. This is the first time in the history of how I spent the apocalypse that she's gonna try to turn it off instead of following me and everybody's bitching, we can't hear you, instead of following me and then she's gonna turn it back on. Okay. So this is you, let me have my moment. Go for it. God damn it, Lynn. You ready? Okay, so I rinsed those off because as you might have guessed, they're dirty. Well, for days, I've been putting the berries that I found into this bottle. And like I said, there were a lot more today. There weren't very many. That's why I'm quitting doing it. Okay, so I've got that many berries so far. I'm going to finish putting these in there. 
People make a big deal out of wine, like wine is hard to make. Wine's not hard to make. There's a reason why prisoners in prison can make wine. It's very easy to make. It only needs a few ingredients. It's not rocket science. In fact, the first wine was probably made because somebody put some fruit out, let it sit there, and it fermented. And they said, wow, now I'm drunk. So of course, they didn't know I was because they were like fucking cavemen and shit. So they didn't know that. They just went, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Of course, that's kind of what me and my friends do when we're drunk, too. We just, you know. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Anyway. Okay. So, I've got a bunch of mulberries. Not as many as I could have if I could have put the sheets all over the yard. But my damn dog would tear them down. True she is. Now, probably the thing that's the weirdest about wine that's the hardest to do is it has to have a lot of sugar. Now this, because I was starting it and I knew it was going to make wine, I was going to make wine with it, I went ahead and dumped some yeast in it already. So I'll have Lynn, because you might not believe me, but see, smell it, see. Oh yeah, it's yeah. great. It smells like bread. Yeah, so you can tell it's already making wine in the little thing. Okay, so why did I do that? Because that's a great big bottle and our refrigerator is full. So by starting the fermentation process already, my wine's got a little kickstart and I didn't have to refrigerate it. So, we like a sweet wine. So, I put in usually four to five cups in a gallon. So I'm going to put, these are about half cup scoops. I'm going to probably put all of this sugar in here. Oh, it won't go down. Why would you use a funnel? Because I'm using a cheap ass bottle. Some people, they get all this wine equipment. They get the fancy bottle and the top that goes up and around and all that to keep mother of vinegar out. I'm going to show you how I keep mother of vinegar out. And that's how I get the water in wine in the bottle. I just use a freaking chopstick and push the sugar through. But yeah, it was just, and I, I like it sweet. I like sweet wine. If you want it to be less sweet, you can do three cups to gallon. You're going to get a dry wine. But I'm going to tell you the truth. The way I feel about a dry wine is, you know what kind of people like a really dry old wine? Liars! <laughs> Liars like really dry wine. So that's why I don't like to make dry wine. I just got to dump all that sugar that's in there in here. Why? Because I want to. Like I said, I like sweet wine. All right. Plus you got the sugar from the berries. So... Next time you pick that up, you can bitch. Selena used all the sugar and they didn't refill the sugar thing. All right. So, not very hard. It's not rocket science. How much yeast did you put in there when you Well, put okay. Well, I'm about to show you because okay. I put in a little bit. Now I'm going to put a little bit. Now, this is another thing. People will say, oh, you got to get the fancy wine yeast. you got to get the wine yeast. The wine yeast costs out the ass. And by the way, it's not any better than just regular cheap-ass bread yeast. And I just put in, I don't even measure, look at this. All I need is enough, probably maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. All I need is enough to combat mother of vinegar that might be in there, because when I get done, it won't be able to get in there. Okay, so now it's as simple as the rest of that. What am I going to put in it? Water. I fill that up with the water. Which is shit. It's very simple. You too can be a wino for just cents a day. You can have a lot of other habits that are expensive. Okay, what, I'm, what I use 
It used to be a Gatorade bottle. I like to use these big gallon Gatorade bottles because they're really help for stout. Um, and what you want to do is you want to fill it to about right there. Because if you do it any fuller, as the yeast starts to work, it's going to blow out the top of the bottle and make a hell of a mess. Okay, so you can see it's just a little bit from the top. Okay, now, oh God, how are we going to stir this? It'll be so difficult to do. We take the cap that came off the Gatorade bottle, we put it back on the Gatorade bottle, and then we shake the living shit out of it! <laughs> We shake it and shake it and shake it till all the silver, all the sugar dissolves and the berries start to do their thing and then it's like all done and it's good. All right. So, there we go. Okay, so now it just looks like fruit juice, right? Okay. So, give me a second. I have to go get a glove. Yes, she said, a glove. Okay. I need a glove and I need a rubber band. And she said a rubber band. She needs a glove and a rubber band. She says, Now, if you go to the store, if you go to Walmart, and you get a box of rubber gloves, a rubber band and sugar, you're going to get some odd looks from the people at the counter. But there you go. Okay, so this is dandelion wine. It's in its second cooking off. It's actually dandelion meat. It's made with honey and dandelion. You don't see any dandelion flavor, flowers because I've already strained it. How do I strain it? Oh, it's so difficult. Oh, it's so hard. The way I strain it is I take this little piece of tubing that somebody threw away. I know, it's me, right? I take it and I tape it about a half an inch from the bottom so it's not in the sediment. When the wine is finished off, which I'll tell you about in a minute, there's sediment in the bottom, you don't want that. So then I wrap that around a bunch of times so it'll stay in place, but not so much that the thing's closed. I stick it in the bottle, I start a siphon, I put it in bottles. That leaves all the sediment in the bottom. If you look, you can see there's a little bit of sediment in there. And you can see if I had that where the tube was right there, it would get all of the wine, but none of the sediment, and that's what you're trying to do. Now, if you'll see the glove, this one is not completely blown up right now because this wine is just about done. When the wine is making, these gloves stand up. Why do I use gloves? Because they're really strong, they're health for stout, they go over the mouth of my jars. My dad, though, my dad used to use rubbers. The reason why is when you're making wine, the thing that will ruin the wine is if mother of vinegar gets in. So now I'm going to tell you a lovely story about my dad. So my dad used to make wine, so I've been making wine literally since I was like 12 years old. My dad used to make wine. He started making it when I was 12. My grandmother, my mother's mother, not his mother, was a Pentecostal Assembly of God churchgoer, very pious. She was coming to visit us. This is when we lived in Arizona. She was coming to visit, and Dad was making this wine. He was making wine. He had bottles, different sized bottles, all over a shelf in a row in the kitchen. Each one of them had a fucking rubber on top if in different stages of erection, right? Well, I was a damn ass, dumb ass kid. I didn't know what those were. I didn't know why mother was getting so upset. She kept telling dad, please move the wine out of the kitchen. Put it in your shop or something. And my dad's like, no, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. It ain't like she ain't never seen one before. I ain't doing it. So my grandmother gets there, and of course I didn't know why. My dad would tell this story for years because it was funny. Of course, it wasn't until I was adult that I realized why it was so funny. Because apparently my grandmother gets there, and here she walks into the kitchen, and here's all these bottles of wine, each one with an erection, and she goes, 
Oh my. <laughs> so, but that's what will happen with these gloves. These gloves, which I, cause lesbians should not have prophylactics in the house. I'm just saying. <laughs> It's, it's embarrassing enough when you're a straight person to go buy a box of rubbers. But if you're a lesbian and you go buy a box of rubbers, that looks bad right away. <laughs> so we use rubber gloves. Also, when Len taught, she used to get a box full of rubber gloves for free every year. So that's another reason I started using them. But this is almost ready to bottle. When this is, com when you can still see there's air in it, when there's no air in it at all, then I can bottle it. Why can't I bottle it? When it see those little bubbles at the top, it's still barely making. When it's making, making, it erupts almost to the top of the bottle. Sometimes, even though I'm not at the top, you can see I'm at that level. Even though I'm not at the top, it'll sometimes spill into the glove when it gets really going good. Okay, so why am I waiting? Because if you bottle this like this, you need a champagne bottle. Because the way bubbling wines work is they're bottled before they've completely cooked off. If you take this wine right now, as little as it's still gassing, I like to say gas, <laughs> but as little as it's still gassing, if you take that wine right now and you stick it in a bottle, chances are it will blow that bottle up at some point because it's still making. So, and the more it's still making, the more likely it is to blow. We had once we bottled a bunch of wine, I thought it was cooked off, and we just had it sitting in the kitchen overnight till we were putting it away. And I had bottled it in liter, plastic liter bottles. We came in the next morning and two of them had blown up. There was wine all over this kitchen. Lynn was crying, running around <laughs> all the floors, licking the floor. It was embarrassing. Yeah, I cried weird. myself to sleep that night. But. When, when it's completely done, then you bottle it, you put it away. And here's the nice thing about wine. It will keep indefinitely. So it's the perfect apocalypse food source. And, you know, plus you get a little buzz, which is fun. So thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you're all subscribing, making your friends subscribe, learning all kinds of new things you maybe didn't know, not burning me an effigy or voodoo dollish or anything like that. Have a good time and until next time, just make do.